to start with Greenfoot, then we're going to start off with a new scenario. Say we're going to save it. I've actually called mine Elephants New, so I'm going to create that, and it creates this. A world and loads of actors. There aren't any there at the moment. In the exam, they'll be given some actors. So there'll be like um, a burger, a mouse, an elephant. So the elephants eat the burgers, but the mouse eats the elephant or something like that. Or there'll be a... Um, you'll see in all the past papers, there'll be a... A wave splashes on a boat and a boat eats fish or something like that. Whatever the protagonist is, it's going to have an arch enemy as well. So first thing you're going to do, we're going to create a subclass for world. And we're just going to use one of the backgrounds that's there. Um, bathroom tile is what I used on the background, the, the nice bluey background. So I'll call this um, my world. <coughs> can be called whatever you want, but you're not allowed a space, not an invalid Java name. I use capitals or lower cases if you want to stick with that convention, My World. I'm just going to put My World as a capital there, and we click on OK. And it's made a world, and when I go to compile, it's made a world. Come on, there we are, and there's the background and all that sort of thing. All right, so that's now my system. It's got a world on there. Now I need to populate that with actors. So I'm going to add some actors. Now I've decided that I'm going to use an elephant, so I'm going to use, um, I think it's in animals, yeah. So animals, stick clear the alligator. The alligator's too big and ends up here, and they want to zoom in and zoom out, and he can't. So I'm going to use an elephant here, so I'll just use an elephant, and I'll call this um, elephant. Now, by convention, Classes are called with a capital letter. You'll see the examiner uses that convention, so it's fine. They don't have to be. One year that he wrote frog with a lowercase f, um, but it doesn't really matter to the running of it. But capital E here, it's in my notes, so I'm going to click on OK, so it's now made an elephant. So let's compile. Now there's no elephants on screen, so using the shift key, the up arrow, I'm going to put an elephant on there, or put a few elephants on there, and now I'm going to remove the elephant just to show it can be removed. And in fact, if I click on the class again, you can insert, uh, I think you can, uh, new elephant and just put it on there like that. So right and click new elephant, put it on. If I reset in any case, it's just going to reset back to the world as it was. So I'm going to put one elephant on, just use the shift key in that. And now I'm going to save the world. A dramatic phrase, but it's just going to save the world. And it saves the world with, it saves it as 600 by 400. It says, call the module prepare. So this is for my world. And it goes down to prepare. And it says, elephant, make a new elephant, the class elephant. It's going to call it little e. It's going to call it elephant. Add the object elephant in position 104 and 94. Now I'm going to just round that up. And I'll put that into position 150. So that's an x, y coordinate. Compile that. Let's close that window. You can call that window up and every time. And then whenever you run the click, reset, it's going to put it back in that x coordinate 150. All right, so if I go to open editor for elephant again, let's move it down. So we've got public class. The elephant is part of the actors, and it does nothing. But in my world, it's in position 150. Later on, I generate these using variables. So variable 1 and oh, variable 2, and close the brackets there, and compile. Oh, add object. Because I haven't declared variable 1 and variable 2, it's not going to work, so it's given me that error. So cannot find symbol. So I best just put the numbers it back in again. And this time I'll choose 150 as the Y coordinate. Compile. So it's happy now. Compiled. No syntax errors. Uh, just note some of the syntax errors can be as simple as semicolon is expected. Oh yeah, I haven't put a semicolon at the end of a line, which is what Java requires at the end of most lines. So click compile. Oh, it's fine. I'm gonna, there we are. So uh, what I'll do, semicolon, but I'm going to miss the brackets out. Let's go and uh, compile. So I'm going to get open brackets or square brackets required. Well, it's in fact those, those, and now it's going to tell me there's a close. Illegal start of expression means I haven't closed the brackets, so it still thinks it's within the parameters for that new elephant. So just little things like that are going to pop up fairly regularly. Right, so if I reset that, the elephant's in position 100, 150. So 100 across, 150 down. So now I'm going to work on the elephant. Now, all these actors have methods. You can see it has one called the void act method, and that's the only one this actually has. So I'm going to put that 
and I'm going to open the editor for Elephant, and there's its act method. That can go. So what I'm going to say, I'm going to say move 1. And again, if I compile, there's an error. Semicolon expected. Oh, no, it's best put the semicolon in. And compile, everything's saved. Now with that, when I run this, it's going to move. And it's moving 1 every tick of the clock. So if I slow it down, you can see it juddering along quite slowly. Remember, it's 600 across in the X and it's 400 in the Y direction. In the exam, it's 8 by 8. But um, we'll pause, we'll reset. Uh, I can make it a bit faster, in fact. So let's run that. So testing it, I might want it to be a bit faster. In fact, let's reset again and let's just get the speed to where we want it to be. So run, that's fine. There we are. Right, open editor again. So we can move one. Or I can get it to move 5, or I can get it to move 10. In fact, I can get it to move 600 if I wanted to move right across the screen in one go. So if you say move 10, compile. So now let's run it. And it just looks like it's moving faster, but it's not. It's actually jumping ahead 10 each time. Let's go and run that and slow it down. Oh, I should have done that before I ran it. Pause. Let's go back to there. Let's run it. You'll see it jumps ahead more on every tick of the clock it's now juddering forward so it's not as smooth this time but it moves faster all right so um or moves further with every leap uh, i'm quite happy to leave it as move one or move three there we are that gets it to move and that sort of thing right so i'm always going to have it moving um later on they'll control it with keys on the keyboard the up arrow the down arrow and so on now i'm going to get it to turn as well the command for turn is just turn uh 10 degrees we'll say uh semicolon and let's compile so everything's fine so I'm, so turn the parameter 10 degrees and we'll run that there we are so it's moving forward 10 and it's turning 10 degrees every tick of the clock so you'll find it just goes round in a circle you can see it's moving clockwise based on uh, the 10 degrees and if we want to move it the other way around minus and we can decide in fact i don't want it to move that much i want it to, oh sorry i don't want it to move that little i'll move it 30 degrees so we'll compile it and now if we run it so it f spins a bit faster without really moving forward at all so now we've got to turn in let's get it moving and turning based on the user so what i'm going to do the command is if greenfoot dot is key down now it's important that the capitals are in the right place so i'm going to do it the correct way first and i'll use the left key and if key down left then i'm going to say turn uh five to, uh minus five it is because i want to move it to the left right semicolon at the end of a command the if statement doesn't have a semicolon notice that green foot goes there so let's just uh compile that and let's go and see it running I'm pressing the left key now, and I'm decide, and I'm turning it. I can't remember how many degrees I had it turn in. Ten degrees, I think it was. So there we are. So reset, and let's go back to the editor again. And so if it's key down, turn left. There are some errors. If you put in capital I, this is the error they'll see. Cannot find symbol. Is key down? Oh no, because it's a little I. It'd be nice if it recognised it in uppercase and lowercase. You've got to have it exactly right. So they will know this because they'll do it so many times. It's a capital K and so on. In fact, left, I believe left is allowed. That's fine. So if I run that, left is fine and right is fine with a lowercase or an uppercase. So if we now go to uh, repeat that bit of code, but this time say right and turn 5. I'll just put that back to lowercase l, although it doesn't matter, but that's how it is in my notes, so I'll leave it as that. If green foot left and it'll do, now I've got to be able to move that elephant left and right and control. Now the elephant is perpetually moving because the code says move forward three, but I have now can control it moving left and right. By adding a bit of command, uh, by adding a command here to determine where the uh, whether the elephant moves on the up key. So I've said up here, so I'll compile that um, and then I'll run that. So the elephant does nothing whatsoever until I press and I'm pressing up now. There we are. So every time I press the up key, it moves forward and I can also now. So that may be what 
people after it may not be um, but pressing up and so on in order to get the elephant to move forward and obviously you can do back by pressing the down key as well but that's the thing anyway right so we want some more people on here or some more actors so a subclass of the actor not of the elephant so if I make a new subclass here it, this could be elephants lying down, elephants waking up, and elephants, little baby elephants, mummy elephants, daddy elephants, whatever it happens to be. But we don't want a subclass of elephant. We want a subclass of actors here. Yeah? I'm going to make a brand new actor on the stage, and it's going to be, um, what do I have? Food, and I'm going to use a burger. Uh, so there we are, burger, and I'm going to use burger. Capital B again, so click OK. Hashes mean it can hasn't been compiled as yet. So we need to compile it first in order to get this. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to put a couple of burgers on there. So there we are, the burgers. And if I reset now, they're going to disappear and the elephant's going to stay. So make sure you save the world. Now when I go to my world, the coding for my world, you'll see that... We've now got not just the elephant, but we've got burgers in these positions here, which can be randomly generated, or you can type that as 300 and Y coordinate 50, and you can get them into particular positions, or I'm quite happy to have them in. Uh, let's reset. So if you move these burgers, of course, when I reset, they'll go back to where they were. Okay, so the burgers are going to do nothing at this point. So I'm now going to get the elephant to eat the burger. So when the elephant moves around, go in, and I'm going to, um, let's run that. So when it gets there, I want it to eat that burger and make it disappear. Um, so elephant, open image, so we'll get to that point. And what we're going to see is if it's touching any burgers. So if, and the code being, if uh, is touching, uh, then brackets, and they just have to remember this coding. If it touch in burger class, close the two brackets, so it's an if statement, then what I'm going to say is the command remove touching burger dot class. Now the error messages will help them along here because if you haven't put a bracket here, for example, let's compile. It's going to give you an error, not a statement where it doesn't tell you. It's not particularly helpful as far as um, needing that. Let's put a burger in. Let's put um, a little b. Let's just see. Compile. A semicolon. Expect. Oh, well, of course it is. Semicolon. Expect. Compile. File save. Can't find the class burger. All right. So it's got to be a capital B. And if is touching, well, let's say there were frogs on there as well. It's going to say similar here. So cannot find symbol frog. Oh, of course not, because they're, after all. A lot of these errors come, you know. So it's not going to be able to find that method now. Method is touching. It can't find it. So let's just do and compile. So now when we run that, there's the elephant and it eats a burger eats a burger, and so on. All right. Now, the final bit I'll do on this little video is um, this if is touching. I'm going to put it into a different module. So here's the public void act. Now, I'm going to create another uh, void, and I'm going to call it eat burger. So they'll see this is similar to Python and Visual Basic. Curly brackets to open the module and close brackets. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to take that bit of coding, X, or, and do tell them, don't copy and paste any of the coding. Type it all out. Just get practicing with doing that. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to say, call uh, eat burger. And eat burger will be recognized as a module um, for the elephant and it'll go off and do that so this program is actually doing exactly the same thing eat burger it'll go off to here so let's compile let's now go and run that still not moving forward now it's calling eat burger it's still calling eat burger now it's saying if is touching left uh if it, if key down is left well it's not so it's not going to turn left it's not right it's not move so but it will say if Is it eat burger? It's checking. Can I eat a burger? Are we touching a burger? No, we're not. Eat 
burger, eat burger, eat burger, and now it knows it's touching a burger, and therefore we can eat it. <laughs>